Diwali is one of the largest open-air festivals in Trinidad and Tobago. And as with everything else, we celebrate this day with our unique flavor and style. It is also known as the Festival of Lights, but has a deeper spiritual meaning for the Hindu community. Diwali is a celebration that Hindus observe at various intervals during the course of the year in which they light numerous deers or lamps. There are many different reasons for the observance of Di Diwali. The word Diwali actually means rows of lights. Diwali, that word Diwali is a shorter version of a word called Deepawali. Deepawali itself means rows of lights. So Diwali in itself means rows of lights that are lit at different intervals in the life of human beings. Diwali is one of the most popular Hindu festivals in the world and is celebrated in many countries such as Nepal, Malaysia, South Africa and of course India. Each celebration differs and here in Trinidad and Tobago there are two main stories associated with the festival. Diwali is observed at different times of the year as I said before it is an occasion in which people they show their joy and their happiness. They express it by lighting numerous deers and certain things that they achieve in life. For example, at one time, the Lord incarnate Sri Ram Chinraji, when he was exiled after serving 14 years in the forest, when he returned to his kingdom of Ayodhya, the citizens welcome him by lighting numerous deers in their homes, in their roadways, and so on. They thought to themselves that their Lord, incarnate, and their king has returned from exile. And to celebrate that joy, his return, which brought happiness to them, they lit numerous deers in their homes and at the side of the roads. Then there's another incident where the deities, divine beings, were conquered at one time by the evil forces called demons. And you know when demons reign, everything will be out of equilibrium. Evil will sort of pervade. So when the deities saw that the evil was pervading, they prayed to the Almighty Lord and asked the Almighty Lord, what shall we do about this? These demons are now running the world and everything is in a state of shamble. So the Lord advised them, that there existed at that time in ancient days an ocean of milk. And the Lord said to these divine beings called deities that if they should throw different sort of herbs in that ocean of milk and churn that ocean of milk, at some point in time while churning, a nectar would come out. And if they should drink of that nectar, they will get that strength that will be able to make them conquer the demons and restore righteousness once more. So these deities, divine beings, went to the demons and subdued themselves to them and asked them to join with them because to churn that ocean, a lot of help was needed. So the divine beings thought to get the others to help them who were demons, they would have to subdue themselves. So eventually they churned the ocean and in the process of churning the ocean, different things came out. Our mythology tells us the first thing that came out was poison. And when that poison came out, the deities and the demons got very scared. And they were thinking to themselves, when this poison begins to pervade, all of us will eventually die. So they thought to themselves they would pray to another incarnation of God by the name of Sheba, Lord Sheba. So when they prayed to him, Lord Shiva manifested himself, appeared in front of them. And when they put forward their problems that churned the ocean and poison came out, Lord Shiva said to them, okay, don't you worry. I will drink that poison and save you all from destruction. So Lord Shiva drank the poison and the deities and demons continued to churn that ocean. Then it is said the moon came out, the celestial cow came out, lots, lots of ornaments and so on came out. And in the process of churning, at one point in time, the Divine Mother, whom we worship at this time every Diwali, 
Mother Lakshmi, she emerged, she came out of that ocean. And when she came out of that ocean, she looked so resplendent and beautiful, very beautifully adorned with divine malas and ornaments and so on. The deities and the demons were charmed by her beauty. And they all rushed towards her to ask her if she could be theirs. Each one wanted to get married to her. Then she told them, no, there is someone special I'm looking for. And if he's here, I'll get married to that one. Fortunately, at that time, the Lord incarnated himself in the form of Vishnu, another name of the Almighty Lord. And when Mother Lakshmi saw Lord Vishnu, she recognized that that is the person she was looking for. And she took a divine mala that she had. She emerged from that water with and placed it around his neck. And she said, Oh Lord, I consider you to be my divine consort. The Lord was so pleased with her that he pronounced two boons upon her. One of the boons was, he said, Oh Mother Lakshmi, Every day at sunset, devotees would worship you by lighting one deer in their homes. And every year at this time, this particular time when you get married to me, to celebrate our anniversary, so to speak, devotees throughout the universe would worship you by lighting numerous deers in their homes. This incident occurred at a time identical to this Diwali period. And every year the tradition continues that people will light numerous deers in their homes that remind them of that marriage of Mother Lakshmi to Lord Vishnu at the time when she emerged from the water. Mother Lakshmi and Lord Ram are integral to the religious observance. In fact, the precursor to Diwali is Ramlila, a 10-day festival that depicts the epic battle between Lord Ram and the demon king Rawan. It is also one of the oldest forms of folk theatre in the Caribbean. Ramalila is a beautifully choreographed play that has become synonymous with Diwali celebrations. Visitors to the island remark on the creativity expressed during the festivities. I really believe that the costume is sold the most because I'm not quite sure if they learn how to dance costume through the story itself or look online for the pictures or anything that they might have any information about the costumes to convey the characters within the story of Ramallah, but I really enjoyed how festive it is and how decorative everything is to like, I guess, a culture where it's been passed down to them versus they experiencing Ramallah from the original source of India. I didn't know anything about Diwali or Ramallah before coming to Trinidad and I've learned about the different other cultures that are here, the Afro-Trinidadian culture, so it's interesting for me to be here and experience the Indo-Trinidadian side of things. Uh, my favorite part so far is learning, learning a story I've never heard before and seeing it performed in such an open space 
and through the children and through the narrators and the costumes are just very eye-catching and very amazing um, really help to separate and differentiate the different characters and keep them all straight for for someone like me who doesn't really understand doesn't really know anything about the culture and the food is delicious <laughs> and I'm really enjoying myself so far. Ramlila recounts the universal myth of the triumph of good over evil and ends with the symbolic burning of an effigy of the demon god Rawan, a sight that usually attracts a huge crowd. <laughs> Another major attraction during the season is the Diwali Naga or City of Lights. It's an exposition of Indian culture and was founded in 1986 to educate the nation about Hinduism. Diwali Naga was established 25 years ago and the main reason was that um, Diwali up until that time was really done very in very small ways in the villages wherever East Indians were settled in the country and particularly the Hindus. Um, we had gotten Diwali declared a holiday in 1966, I think it was, and the celebrations still remained in the villages. The wider country did not really know much about the celebration of Diwali, this very popular Hindu festival. And we thought that we should get the Diwali to become a truly national festival, open it up, open it up to the wider community so they could learn about the, the festival of Diwali and about things Hindu. So we thought that we will use the forum of Diwali, the festival of Diwali, which is one of the most, or if not the most popular Hindu festival in Trinidad and Tobago, to build a festival around the, that, the, the Diwali. And, uh, and so open it up to the entire country, make it a truly national one. And um, this is how we decided, after thinking it through, that we should have a cultural come religious festival immediately prior to the wedding. We ended up in 1986 when it first started with seven days of the festival. Um, that was subsequently increased to nine. And this year we are going to Mr. Sharma describes the significance of the Naga to Diwali festivities. Diwali Nagar has become the focus, the focus of Diwali celebrations in Trinidad and perhaps the West. Uh, we have the biggest celebration of Diwali right here at the Diwali Nagar. It has become so popular that, uh, that people from Canada and the US and so on, mainly Trinidadians who have settled there uh, for many, many years. They reconfigure their holidays and so on in order to get it around this time to come to Trinidad and Tobago to sort of reconnect with their roots and reconnect with their, with their, their religion and culture and so on. The Diwali Naga offers a variety of activities to Hindus and non-Hindus. Booths are set up each year, selling various commodities associated with Indian culture, such as food, clothing, jewelry, and even religious emblems. Also, a grand cultural show is put on, featuring local and foreign artists. It is truly a festival within a festival. The cultural performances are the main highlights of the Nagar and contribute to the growing number of tourists coming to the site each year. This according to Public Relations Officer Suruj Deo Mangu. Tourists come to see the, the, the layout. The food is a major attraction here for everybody, the food. You go with traditional Indian food like the roti and the choka and what have you. So they, they, they come for that. Then of course 
you know, to, to mingle and move around, to do so, the shopping for Diwali, gifts and whatever. They, they come around the shop and of course the main stage activity. Those who are interested in the folk theatre will go and visit the folk theatre. Those of them, in, those of the, the members of the public who are interested in the, in the uh, religious booth will go and participate and what have you. But there's so much thing, but for the tourists, they like to come and see what happens on that main stage. What brings me to the Nagar? Um, it is a festival of Diwali and I like seeing all the pretty things in the Nagar. The pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, and um, the, the um, spots they have where they build all of the um, religious stuff. Yeah, that's one of the main attractions here as well. Looking at the different um, crafts and stuff and the, the delicacies, can't go wrong with that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love any of the Indian culture, so I'm enjoying it greatly. Well, every year we usually come to see whatever they have nice to offer. I'm here for food eh? and some clothing for my kids because we'll be visiting various um, temple celebrations. Love to come Nagar. Well, I have traversed this world. I've been to 55 countries already. I've seen the rally celebrations, quite a bit of countries. And what we do here at Trinidad and Tobago is really, really unique. Our celebration, we stick to the tradition in, in the process of not losing the true spirit of Diwali. Now here, people see Diwali Nagar as a, a stage activity, a commercial area. No, we have folk theatre. Every night we have activities reflecting some of the traditional items and so. We have commercial booth. Of course, we have religious booth. We have NGOs and there's so many activities taking place here. But what I see in, in Diwali Nagar is we have created the stage, we have created the opportunity, we have created the venue for Trinidad and Tobago and in fact the world to come together in one main gathering. You know, we have people year after and it's increasing and I want to thank the Tourism Development Corporation for their, for their input. We have had tourists coming from all over the world year after and it's growing. We have 32 come, who will be here for Diwali this year and from Suriname, we have a lot coming from Virginia and so many other places in this world. Now, what I like about Diwali Nagar, what we did was provide an opportunity for the Indo-Caribbean artists, a stage for them to come and perform. And not only a stage, but a very big stage. This does not happen in some of these countries. So they always look forward to coming around Diwali time. They take their holidays and the artists come, their family come, their friends come. So, I mean, Diwali Nagar is really for the people. Mr. Munger estimates, that 250,000 people will pass through the Niwali Naga gates by the end of the festival. The event is truly well attended, but has caused some changes in how Diwali is celebrated in surrounding villages. Some people do lament the fact that has <coughs> Diwali Nagar this has become so huge that it has closed down a lot of little celebrations, especially around um, Shagwanas, where Diwali Nagar is located where we used to have celebrations, you could have seen it on the highway coming down in little villages and so on. Those have literally, virtually closed down. But the Diwali in other areas are, are still very, is still very prevalent and they have increased, they have um, made the Diwali celebration a lot better following upon what we do here at Diwali Nagar. <laughs> The Diwali Naga traditionally ends on the day before the Diwali holiday. This ensures that people can observe their usual traditions. 25-year-old Amrita Miraj shares her Diwali preparations at home with her family. On Diwali, 
day itself, or the family, we come together and we perform a Lakshmi Puja. It's of course worship to Mother Lakshmi and um, we perform Hawan, which is offerings to Mother Lakshmi via the Agni Deota or the fire. And we also light nine deers on that um, puja for that puja. And we also sing in praise to Mother Lakshmi. And I think that is the most significant aspect of Diwali for me. Um, there's a certain feeling, a certain emotion that can only be evoked during puja. And I think to me, that resonates with me the most. Normally, we would, of course, get up early in the morning. We perform our morning worship and we immediately begin preparing the meals and whatnot for Diwali. Um, before the evening's proceedings, we of course would soak the deers in water, we'd put them in a large tub or something. We soak them for a couple of hours or so, so that when we light them in the evening, they, um, they don't burn out as fast. And we also, as I said, prepare meals. Um, now this year though, I, I got married this year, so, um, in the morning period, I'll be going home to my parents and I would spend some time with them, help them perhaps clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up, help them prepare meals and just spend time with them, you know, because apart from these spiritual aspects, Diwali, it's a family occasion, you know, so that's equally important as well. There are many traditions associated with the observance of Diwali, such as fasting from meat and alcohol the cleaning of homes, and the sharing of sweets, each tradition having a specific spiritual significance. Diwali is really a spiritual occasion, and we have two ways of being spiritual. One, we can be cleaned externally by cleaning our bodies and wearing new clothes and cleaning our homes and so on. That's a type of spirituality. And there is an internal cleansing in which our thoughts and our minds and our attitudes and actions have to be cleaned. See? It is said cleanliness is next to godliness. So when we are cleaned spiritually, we call that fasting. And like I said, cleanliness is next to godliness. And when one fasts in that method, not only with his thoughts and bodies clean, but with his actions and other things clean, He's in the best position to get the attention of the Almighty Lord in his life. And this is how we observe the Diwali. We clean our homes, our bodies, our minds. We discipline our children. We tell them that when they go out there, they must not hurt anyone. They must not speak bad language. They must also fast too. And on the day in question, the families would sit at sunset together. They would light a deer for their prayers, worship the Divine Mother. They were like numerous deers in their compounds and they would just share sweets and vegetables and food and so on to their neighbors and friends and relatives. Prayer then, worship of Mother Lakshmi is an integral part of the observance of Deepawali or Diwali. Om Shira Sagara Sambhutam Sharire Vishnu Masritam यजमानहिताय थाय लक्ष्मी आवय हम यहम ओम नमस्ते अस्तु महामाये श्री पीटे सूर पूजते संका चक्रा गदाहस्ते महालक्ष्मी नमोस्तुते बुली श्री लक्ष्मी माता की जय शरणम प्रसिद्ध पंडित श्री फिर व्हेन वी इनवोक हर प्रेजेंस वी आर गोइंग टू ऑफर हर डिवाइन सीट when you sprinkle the rice upon the leaves, it means that you offer her a seat, sprinkle slowly. Om Nana Rattam Samayuktam Karata Swara Vibhushatam Asanam Deva Devasya Pritya Pritya Priti Gratam. Then you bathe her with water, you three times, then she three times. Om Sarva Paparam Deviyam Gangayam Nirmalam Jalam. Mayadatam Achmaniyam Grihetam Purushotama Iha Gachihateshtamam Pooja Grihan Now we are going to give her divine bath called Panchamrit Snan, divine bath. This mixture is made out of five nectars. Panchamrit, Panch means five, Amrit means nectars, milk, honey, ghee, dahi, sugar. 
Bid her slowly three times, and you have to be a devotee. Ring the bells. Om Pancham Ritam Mayani Tam Payuradhi Gritam Ru Sharkaravasama Yuktam Snar Tam Puti Gritam. Lakshmi Mata Ki Jai. After beaded her with the divine baths, you were in salted water. Om Ganga Chai Yamuna Chaiva, Godavari Saraswati Narmada, Sindhu Kaviri Snanar Tampati Gratam, Buli Sri Lakshmi Mata Ki Jai Sharanam. After her bath, we give her clean clothing. The cloth represents clothing. You see, she's in pink. Touch. Pray to Mother Lakshmi. Oh, Devi. At this stage in my puja to you, I'm love, offering to you lovely clothing. May you kindly accept these offerings, bestow blessings upon me. Om Vira Sukti Samayukti Yagya Shama Samanviti Sarva Varanpadi Devi Vasa Si Priti Gretam. Touch it here. Jai Lakshmi Mata, see that? Blessed rising. In every Pujan, the average Hindu, he erects a flag called a Jandi. The color of that flag or Jandi signifies the kind of Pujan that we have performed. For example, in the case of Lakshmi Puja, a pink flag is erected. In the case of Hanuman Puja, a red flag is erected. In the case of Durga Puja, a yellow flag and so on, you see? So that the flag then really symbolizes uh, the kind of puja that is done. It is also said that the flagpole is a connection between the devotee and the flag. On some flags, a picture of the deity worship is placed. On other flags, only the color of the flag is used. In ancient days, I read a book called the Ayurveda. In ancient days, people would worship the rain god called Indra to ask him to let the rainfall be prompt, the rainy season be prompt. And what they would do according to that book called the Ayurveda? They would erect a flagpole with a flag at the top with a picture or an emblem of that rain god Indra. And at the base of the flag, or the root of the flag, if you want to see, they will put an altar that is called a bedi. A bedi is an altar. So that the base of the flag lies the altar. And on the altar, they make their offerings. Thinking now that the flagpole is that connection, that spirituality, that would take the offerings to the deity that exists on the flag. So it's really scientific yet spiritual. After performing the Lakshmi Puja comes the most anticipated event of the night, the lighting of deers. As you may know, Diwali is traditionally referred to as the darkest night of the year. And when you light all of those deers and you place them in rows along the sides of your home, along the driveways of your home, it just evokes a certain spirit, a certain joy within you. And it's such a wonderful experience. And from a child growing up to now, you know, it's the best part of Diwali. A deer is a lamp. In ancient days, to get light to eradicate darkness, people will go to the riverside and take up little lumps of clay and they will shape it into little, what you call deers, and put oil in it and put a wick and they would light it. Right? So that would eradicate the darkness from the environment in their homes. But there's a darkness that exists in the minds of all of us. This body is like the earthen part of it called the deer. The internal part of the body with the organs are like the oil. The wick that is put is like the mind. And the soul is like the flame. The human body is like, is like into a deer. But somehow we don't have anyone to light that flame inside of it. It is there lit already. We are, we are unable to discover that light. How do we discover that light? When we remove all our desires and all the negativity. 
let the truth reveal itself. And that truth is light, and that truth is God. Many people agree that this is their favorite part of the religious observance, especially for children. This is where creativity is expressed, as the craft of bamboo bending is practiced. The bamboo is cut and shaped into a variety of designs. The deers are then placed on the bamboo, bringing the designs to life. The tradition of bamboo bending is kept alive by endeavors of the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Company's contest that awards prizes to the best bamboo design. The competition has been in existence for the past 14 years and is held just before Diwali at the Mid Center Mall in Shogwanas. The event attracts a huge crowd and is just another way to enjoy the season. These large celebrations usually require hundreds of deers, and Radhika's Pottery is just one of the more popular places to get these clay lamps. In Trinidad and Tobago, most people prefer to buy handmade deers. And here is where the whole process begins. Owner Andy Benny explains. The first step in making deer, you have to have clay, obviously, and um, you have to prepare it. What we prepared is that machine called Epognol. That is, um, take it from a raw state, into a more processed thing. Just run the trays. I'm going to with that auger inside, just swirl it around, spin it and compact it, push it out. Just kind of crush up all the lumps and stone and whatever it may have. And make it ready for the guy to use on the wheel with his hand. From there, everything we do here, well not everything, some of the ideas we make by machines. But right now we focus on hand made deals. Guy takes it on the wheel, sticks it on the wheel plate, and everything is done manually from there. He goes about using his fingers to form the deer. And if you look closely, if you look closely, you have a piece of string on his hand attached a little broomstick that is used for the rotation of the wheel to cut the deer off from the charge of the clay. And the deer is made, there's another guy who's taking it off the wheel. He's taking down the deer and making the little lip by which the wick is, um, goes on after the oil. So the wick extends on that lip. We just protrude it out of the deer. After the deer is made, the next step is to dry it. If you have good weather, you could use the sun. If not, your light dry on its own uh, inside. You rack them up and it dries. When it dries, or even half dry sometimes, the deer is ready to fire. We, put, we fill them in the kiln. Until we have a full pack, a full load in our deers, and we apply fire to it. Firing is a process, you have to do it gradually. With deers, we fire for about five to six hours. Light it up, heat it up for about an hour and a half. Then a gradual raising of the temperature. And we work by average, we've been doing this so long, we know when it, you know, it reaches peak firing and the, the oven, like we said, the oven finish. And after fire, when it's finished, you have to leave it a couple of hours to cool. Not a couple, we leave it overnight actually. The next morning, the guys just come out and um, take off the covering on top and get ready to empty it. And the deer is ready for sale. Mr. Benny estimates that radicals make a couple hundred thousand deers during the Diwali season, which starts around June for this industrial shop. Potters make an average of 3,000 deers per day as the demand for these products keep growing each year. Indeed, Diwali celebrations seem to have grown bigger and arguably better each year. At least, that's what 84-year-old Radhika Nanku thinks. Now it's plenty bigger and what I must say, better <laughs> with the year, you know. We have celebration all over the country now. Like, we have in the different temples, People celebrate, whoever in their own village, they have their temple, and they have big celebration. They light beers by the hundreds, and they even have like little shows and things, you know, with the people and the children. Like they, sometimes you hear they say they have and they organize and they have little celebration, big celebration. They have a Diwali queen and little contest and whatever. No, but long ago we never had that.
The way Diwali is celebrated has certainly changed over the years. But are these changes all good? Well, one thing for sure that we had little or no fireworks available. I remember in our boy days, we used to uh, uh, burst the bamboo. And that's a tradition that is almost dead in this country. And I, I, I think that those who are listening or viewing should try and do something to revive that art form. Now children go for those ready mixed stuff, the fireworks and the explosive ones. That is something different. Then the traditional meals that we eat around that time, you no longer get those things again. I remember eating things like hujia, that's something is a bake, something like a, what you'll call a alu pie bake with coconut stuffings. And I still, I still yearn for something like that, but you don't get those items again anywhere. Apart from that, I, Diwali celebration, years gone, I was a village, a village celebration, and a village activity. You know, you meet, you greet neighbors, you exchange sweets, food, what have you. I don't see that happening much any longer. Yes, you would have friends, but not from the, the, within the community. And you know, we need to, to go back to rekindle that community spirit, and it is important for us, and I think the young people should try you know, and get back everybody, the communities together. Well, it's plenty different now with modern age. Everything is, has changed. They have bigger celebration now, much more than before. Because now people, they get together like the village and they um, organize and they, they set up bamboo and light lots of deer and everything has changed a lot now, everything. And people celebrate Diwali in a way to it. And sometimes I say it's too much fun. <laughs> I can say for sure that Diwali has become more commercialized and that today we have the launching of Diwali and we have more advertising taking place and it's an opportunity for persons to of course sell commodities relating to Diwali. So I know for sure um, it's used as an opportunity to promote um, Indian culture, Indian cultural items, um, but I think Diwali has remained the same for me. That spiritual connection, it all boils down to spending time with your family, lighting the deers and of course worship to Mother Lakshmi. This observance that is called Diwali, some people term it as a a festival. I wouldn't want to define it as a festival. I would want to say a spiritual observance because when we understand the true meaning of the Pawali spirituality, we would see it's really not a festival as such then. It's a spiritual occasion. This is not confined only to Hindus discovering who we are or observing the Pawali or Diwali. It's a universal observance and people of all different races and classes and creeds, as a matter of fact, everyone that God has created has that option in his life to observe Diwali. Growing up, I know that, um, of course, we live in a multicultural society, so everyone partakes in um, everyone else's festivals. But I've personally noticed that many non-Hindus are beginning to become more actively involved in Diwali whether it's visiting the homes of Hindu friends or you know colleagues and I think they're becoming more involved whether it's lighting deals with the families themselves, partaking of the meals, witnessing the pujas and um, of course Ram Lila, which is a precursor to Diwali, I know that many non-Hindus are becoming involved in that and showing more interest. So definitely I think the non-Hindu interest is growing. Um, as a non-Hindu, I mean, I've grown up around, I mean, while growing up, you know, we, you, you become accustomed to Diwali and, and, and as you get older, it means so much more to you because, you know, it's the lights and peace, you know, that sort of thing. It's the way how they carry, carry along the, the ceremony, you know, so I never see it before, right, never see it before, so. Well, mainly experience in a different side of the culture, so that's the good part about it for me. We have found that, um, for instance, in businesses and the banks and, and so on, people now dress up in the, in the Eastern wear, Hindu wear, saris or salwar and kameez and so on, which we never used to see before. And there are other areas that celebrate that do light deers um, on Diwali night, um, areas which are, which are not predominantly Hindu. So the, the non-Hindus get involved. And I think it's mainly because of the, the message that Diwali has, uh, has, has um, given to the country, that is the triumph of 
light over darkness, of good over evil, and so on. This, this, is, this is a universal uh, message, and it doesn't, it isn't limited to just the Hindu religion. So it, it appeals to the non-Hindu also, and, and they have, they have welcomed um, doing what some of our Hindu brethren do, lighting the beer, get dispelling the darkness. Well, I have had friends who are non-Hindus, and um, they have admitted to me that they do like beers. And um, when I question them and ask them, well, why do you like beers? They told me, Pandit, when you look at a Hindu home, you pass there. Just by looking at the flags in their homes, you feel a sense of spirituality and you feel a sense of progress. They have also observed the lifestyle of Hindu people. I'm not trying to belittle others here, right? But the average Hindu man is a very progressive man. So they believe by lighting their beers, so if they like beers too, some sort of spirituality would be enhanced in their lives. Diwali means to have an insight and to be more towards the society. I mean, in Diwali we light up lamps, which means that we take ourselves to a more uh, higher perspective. And for us, for me, it will mean that how I can best serve the society. The light of love. We will like that light. Each and every one of us have that light in us. And I would like to see that light spread to, to everybody, to the whole world. Not for just Diwali's sake alone. But Diwali is every day to me. Because we want to see that illumination of love that develops with everybody. It's like um, Christmas for Hindus then. It's the um, light over darkness. It's good over evil. And it, it tends to spread that joyous um, light into your hearts. It's about giving peace, um, being with your family and sharing. It's much more than just Diwali means the festival of lights. It goes deeper than that. It's a very spiritual and a very rewarding exercise when Diwali comes around. Firstly, we enjoy the ambience of the beautiful light. And I always tell people, the greatest light of all is the light, that light within you, the light of the children. As you place the simple lamp on the earth to lit, so also we light this light within, so the entire year can be brighter and brighter for all of us, for the old one, for the young one, and for the future one to come in our beautiful land, Trinidad and Tobago. This festival means many things to many people and contributes to the multicultural landscape of Trinidad and Tobago.
Thank you.